Okay, I think this is part five now. I'm, uh, I've made a few passes at the uh, facing curve, getting real close. I'm about to take another set of measurements. This time I'm going to let you watch the graph and see how it changes as I uh, take the readings. Hopefully that'll be noticeable. I got 50.2. Boom! That's the first reading. Jumped a little bit. And keep your eyes on the next one. 45.3. Here we go. Boink. So they're getting, getting closer to the magenta line. Got a piece of piece of dirt and it's between the gauge and the mouthpiece which is causing me a little trouble here. I think I'm at 40.4. Okay, it's 35 even. Whoops! See when you type in Something wrong, it shows up right away. So 35. I'm onto the 26 feeler and twenty-nine point nine, I guess. Oh, that jumped up nice. Thirty-seven feeler, we're at twenty-four point eight. Very even right now, left to right. 49 feelers at 20 on the left and 19.9 on the right. Not too bad. So you see we're right around here with our measurements. 14.8 That didn't come up as far as I was hoping it would. I was hoping this was the last pass here. 10.7. Huh, we got one one bump there. Could be a bad reading, could be something something on the mouthpiece or gauge. 6.4, 6.3. 2. Point and the tip opening is still under 114, but the tip rail has gotten a little thicker. Trying to reduce the glare on the PC screen, but gotta worry about the mouthpiece. 28. I'm still a little on the thick side, but not too bad. So, um, so that's a pretty good curve. I gotta fix that bump there, and I can recalculate. Uh, the target curve to see how close a new target curve will go through the current facing of where I'm at because that looks pretty good except for that one bump there. I either have to fix it or remeasure it. And what the mouthpiece looks like. See the tip rail is kind of on the thick side. Now what I would do now is uh, I mean, if the facing was all good, but even if I'm kind of like 90 some percent there, 99 percent there, is it's time to uh, um, shape the tip rail, and um, this is how I do that. I uh, take my uh, half round file, and you're trying to lower the baffle from the inside. This is a good. It's a little awkward at first to get used to this, but you can see what you're doing. You're looking right at the tip rail and 
taken away material from the inside. The outside hasn't changed until you get what looks like a, a decent tip rail to you. I don't always use the same type of tip rail. I, I uh, let the mouthpiece speak to me. Now with the corners, sometimes they get a little rough. There's special files you can use to help yourself out. This little round one is one of my favorite. Kind of gets in there and takes out the crud that's left there. Sometimes you can just use the uh, corner of this file. I also, um, on soft materials, even on brass, brass, uh, not so much, but silverite and, and hard rubber, you can, you can detail the corners with a sharp pocket knife until they look the way you want it to. They don't have to be sharp, they don't have to be round. It looks nice when they're symmetric. So, that's most of the way there. And now you got to go back to your uh, sandpaper or sanding sticks. So I got to start with the uh, middle, middle grit. I don't think I have to go all the way down to the coarse one. And this is good. You can kind of go from this side. You're hoping not to thin the tip rail too much. You can go a little bit. I mean, thin it if you, you overshoot it is what I'm concerned with. But um, yeah, I'm kind of overshooting it a little bit. I think that'll clean up with one one little pass on the sandpaper. So that's you know, the black one. This is the finest. Later, I'll do the steel wool after I make sure that's all where it should be. So like I said, it's it's now rounded off the inside edge a little bit because of that. So you can kind of sharpen it up with a light pass on your sandpaper. Okay, and that kind of defines it. There you have a nice tip rail. Um, the other things I, I did while the, uh, between the last two videos um, is I thinned this rail a little bit from the inside and the outside, trying to make it more symmetric with this one. And, um, you know, I'm always checking against the uh, template where we uh, where we should be, except I, uh, I picked up the Barry template there, didn't I? No, that's a tenor one, okay. So, there we are. You can see that's coming real nice. That'll match up real nice. And um, the other thing I do is, uh, I'll show you now, I usually do this at the end of the job, but an adjustment for altissimo response. Um, I find that if this tip rail is flat, that's not good for you know, flat against the uh, uh, surface here. That's not the best for altissimo. Uh, what you want to do is is slightly roll it, very little. Um, it's not something you can measure. You got to do it by feel and by eye. You kind of put it on there. Maybe you could feel where it is, wants to sit flat, start it, and then just pick up the back by like an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. You don't need much. If you go a lot. Um, it'll be great for altissimo, but it may squeak, and it also might um, uh, sound airy in the normal register. So a lot of lakeys are done that way, which is where I, I kind of found out about this. I had a lakey with a lot of flip on it. It was great for altissimo, but it had those defects, uh, I mean, in sound being airy. So I took like 90% of it away, and it still was good for altissimo, um, and then the, the tone got clear. So... You know, just a little bit on there, and uh, you know, the, the other thing that helps Altissimo is the rest of the facing curve being on a nice shape, you know, without any bumps, flat spots, and and things around there. So between between the two of the those, that allows you to use a a nice responsive facing curve, allows you <coughs> to use a <coughs> excuse me a little stiffer reed, and um, that'll that that'll speak better for Altissimo. Okay, so let me clean this up here. 
and uh, when I rolled that out, the center of the tip rail seemed to get a little fatter. So you may have to go back to the sandpaper. Um, this time I'll use uh, just the finest, go right down the middle. That doesn't clean it up, you go to the next courses. Okay, so now we are at, well, what do you know, we're up to 116, which is where we started at. We gained another 2,000 just from thinning the tip rail from the inside. And um, what was uh, a tip rail that was 28 thousandths thick, I would now call, yeah, you know, it's too rounded, i got to give it another little pass, sharpen that inside edge so I can measure it. I looked out under magnification, it was like, you know, where, where do you, where do you, where's your reference points? So now I can see two edges, an inside and an outside edge. Twenty-one, twenty-two thousandths. So that's a, a medium-thin tip rail.